and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some counterfeit Poros. Our next meme tier Monday deck going to be coming back with the Poros again. Um, this time a little bit different version. We're going to be playing counterfeit copies in here. Now the counterfeit copies isn't really for the Poros too much. Um, they're, they're really for the spells. Like we want to hit Poro snacks with it. We want to hit Aurora Porealis, in particular like this this spell, so we just can keep on drawing more Aurora Porealises in the late game. Progress day, uh, same kind of thing. You know, like we can chain progress days together, and uh, we can also go like progress day, um, create uh, or like you know draw zero mana counterfeit copies, and you know that kind of thing too. And then we can have zero mana counterfeit copies that that maybe uh, makes some zero mana. Uh, poros or you know like that kind of stuff so that's that's kind of what we got going on here but then you know we got our normal uh poro stuff in the mid game our two champions braum and vi help us uh you know help us be removal and they're also both very good defensive things to get to a later game because having three aurora porealis and three progress days does sound pretty crazy all right we got a hextech transmogulator because we can either turn our opponent's really big follower into one of our little poros or if we get like a big heart of the fluff, we can then use a transmogulator and make another big heart of the fluff as well and kind of surprise our opponent. Yeah, you know, maybe we have some big elusive heart of the puffs or heart of the fluffs. Um, so yeah, big poros. That's what we got going on. All right, let's play some games. So we're going to, uh, with the, with it being a meme tier Monday deck, we're just playing in normal. We're gonna go play five games over in normal with it, and let's have some fun. Vimerdinger. Vimerdinger is not fun. I don't even know if we keep Mighty Poro. Yeah, we could probably keep a Mighty Poro. I suppose. Herder. <clears throat> Not a bad card, but we want a Poro in play first, of course. What you looking for? Could go. Okay, never mind. I was gonna say that we could go with the Aurora Porealis on turn three instead of the Mighty Poro on turn three, but not anymore. Hey, Dewan. I'm doing good. How are you? Trust me. They add up. <clears throat> Man, they still have nothing this turn either. Nothing turn three or turn four. But then uh, definitely hybriding her plus a bunch of spells. Gotta be what they were going for. Yeah, I think the Poro Herder change was a buff. I think that the one mana slot was too overcrowded. Sorry, the four mana slot was too overcrowded, especially with moving Braum to four mana. That you'd have like Braum and the Poro Herder, and a lot of times you want like Professor Von Yip with these as well. And and so I think moving it up to two mana helps out a lot. Would you believe he won't fit in my hand? All right, let's go. <clears throat> I 
Alright, still gonna do a lot of damage. <clears throat> and I think I just want to cast Aurora Porealis this turn. I think. Yeah, I think so. Maybe not. No, maybe not. Maybe we do this. Basically, this would give us uh, 10 mana, so we'd be able to go Porealis plus a Poro Snacks. We're just dead to twin disciplines. I play this. Yay, not twin disciplines. Developers learn that something that generates tons and tons of zero mana spells, you know, just breaking your mana system, breaking your monetary system, that's not okay. That's that's how you break the game. When will when will game developers realize that? It's not. That do, doesn't seem to be a difficult concept. Just don't have things. that can generate continuous value for zero mana. At least like that. Um, continuous cards and everything like that. Kind of like Poro Snacks. Let's keep Poro Snacks also. So I don't want to play another 1-1 one, one and then and then they make it rain. I'm going to um, I'm gonna you know be able to protect my poros from make it rain with uh, poro snacks. That's my plan there. Smart. GG. Let's go. I'm counting.
Oh, nice, Alfredo. You just won two games in a row with the, with the one drop deck with Professor Taskmaster. Awesome. Sometimes you have opponents give up like that in normal that you wouldn't necessarily see in ranked. But we're playing meme tier decks. Alright, I'm going to keep this curve. Mystic Shot, Mighty Pour, Braum. Not sure what I want to counterfeit copies in this hand. Progress Day could be a good one. These old eyes Later on. Our homes. There's like none of these cards though that I would just like absolutely love to draw again right now. So I'm just going to hold off on the, the counterfeit copies for now. And I'll end round. I don't want to, I don't really want to attack and have my Mighty Poro take two damage. That's what Brahm's for. That's why I wait on counterfeit copies. Sometimes you need that extra mana. If they would have challenged Mystic Shot, we would have had Mystic Shot to take out their Braum. Um, Want to beam Braum? about playing an Elise Zed deck. You could do Elise and Zed together. The elusives and things like that. You could do that. I don't really feel like that's a worthwhile trade. Actually, when we're a deck with like Poro snacks. Let us get going. I suppose so. So Heart of the Flocked would make, let's see, 4, 7, 10, a 10, 9. Let's draw. There we go. All right, so they're going to counterfeit copies the Poro Snacks. Mayhaps. Pretty sure I can do 20 damage to them next turn if they have no removal. With if they have no removal and they can't block an elusive, so I guess that's that's asking a lot. They're out there. I'll spot them. I don't want to make it like super obvious to play Withering Whale. 
And yeah, I want to have Poros Nax be able to protect against Withering Whale. I'm not going to let Withering Whale plus Anivia <clears throat> kill these. Alright, see a little math right here. So, how much power we got? 4, 8, 10, 12... 12 plus 5 is 17, uh, plus that 2 is 19, plus uh, the extra one from the Poro Snacks 20. So we will be able to do, we will have a 20 power thing. So I think that's, that's my play. Attack him for 20. I don't want any of these to die. So now it's just 16. Then obviously I need a thermogenic beam the egg. Yeah, I mean, I could have played the fluff first. I don't. I, I feel like it was safer to play the other thing first, honestly. Like they had to withering whale right then. You know, if they would have just done anything, you know, any other play. You know, a lot of times, like people would think maybe, okay, maybe save withering. You know, let them play something else, save withering whale for combat or things like that. They just, they just read it and played withering whale right away. So. You know, they... It was a good play. A lot of that game was them having the vengeance for my Braum. That was huge. Well, that, and then also obviously Miss Call for Anivia. Both, both those... That was huge, though, them killing my Braum. <laughs> so you never play Fluffed in Poro decks? Well, then you're not. Are you playing a Poro deck? Doesn't sound like you're playing a Poro deck to me. No, I don't think Parade Electro Rig is better than Vi. <laughs> Fluffed is the coolest card for the Boros. Yeah, it's true. You can also get it from Aurora Borealis. That's true. Poro Herders. Stands for violence. Follow along, little ones. I 
friend, you are lucky, man. My shield is my sword. Have you met my shield? Don't think that we're gonna be winning this. No, we're definitely not winning this. Well, I don't know. I just have a really good hand. This solitary monk vibe. This this is gonna be tough. We have our own Vi we haven't drawn in four games now. But these Vimerdinger decks are good. They are good. Eminently logical. I don't have a Poro Snacks. Oh darn, I was hoping they would be worried about Poro Snacks. Oh, I guess they just challenge here. Don't really have a chance. <clears throat> Heal. Hammerding are still broken. Solitary Monk should be a 3-3, not a 4-3. Vi's just fine. <laughs> I know we've played against Vimer twice in normal now. Like that that's two of our two of our three losses are against Vimer. Doing the same thing of just Heimerdinger make a bunch of bunch of spells. All right, one and three. Um, hopefully not Vimer. Speaking of Vi, though, I mean, we, we are playing Vi. Vi's a really strong card. We've we've drawn zero Vi's out of the probably about, you know, probably about 80 cards that we've drawn total with all the games, including Mulligans and everything. We haven't seen Vi at all, and there's three in our deck. So you'd think that we'd see that card sometime soon. Yeah, Plunder Poro. Lame. 
if you don't get to plunder Poro. Well, I mean, I guess we still could if I want to. Yeah, I mean, I, we don't need to mystic shots. Yeah, we can do daring Poro and then plunder post combat. <laughs> Fearsome challenger. Those two are like. <laughs> those two are like exact opposites. Alright, well, at least we got. We found Vi finally. Finally found Vi. Poro doing some damage. 4-4 four, four Overwhelm. Doing some damage. One girl wrecking crew. Wolf Rider. So I'd like to cast Aurora Porealis. This turn, I know that's kind of what we want to counterfeit copies. It's just, we just have like the perfect demand to cast this. So we're just not gonna really counterfeit copies it. We could copies the Poro snacks that it creates. Something we could. Uh, counterfeit copies. You own what you take. One tough Poro. Stand and fight. Right, don't want to attack with anything else, do ya? Kill Sejuani unless they use Fury of the North. I hope they just nab some of my Poro snacks. That was smart, putting Poro snacks in instead of Porealis. Porealis could actually do something to them. I hope they just nab two Poro snacks. Not that card. That card's good. Follow along, little one. <laughs> All right, you can have Poro Herder. That's okay. Um. 
Do I want to challenge? No, we'll just go for the win. Okay. So yeah, so I was gonna challenge the elusive. I was gonna cast the other Poro Snacks and make that lethal and kill our opponent. And they figure that out. With having six mana, it, I wanted to cast Aurora Porealis, but um, that was the way to have lethal there. All right, so two and three, very respectable, very respectable. Um, it is kind of hard to have the games uh, go long enough where you have the ability to cast, you know, a bunch of Porealises and progress days and everything. This card's really cool, but it's really expensive. You know, because it costs six mana to draw the stuff, and then you have to, you know, spend a lot more mana to cast those things. So it's, it is quite expensive. But... It is good. So I'm not sure about having three of those and three progress days. And also, Heart of the Fluff could probably just be a two of. Because um, you don't really need two Heart of the Fluffs in hand. You just need one, and yeah, there's a chance that Porealis creates one for you. But this could probably just be a two of. That's, I've played two of with this card before. And liked it just fine. And so I, so maybe maybe like four or five of these total instead of six. And like two of these. And so maybe you free up two or three slots just to have something early, you know, just to have some more early stuff. Maybe it's like Averroes and Sentry. You know, like maybe you just put Aver Averroes and Sentry in this deck that I know it's not a Poro, but... It just blocks and draws a card. Um, which, you know, drawing cards is good. Or you can have... Could have, like, some Frostbite stuff for defense. Defensive purposes, you know, like Flash Freeze and things like that. Um, or maybe something else in the mid-game... Could we play, like, Wolf Rider in our deck? Hearth Guard's always pretty cool, too. Um, did you play Wolf Rider in this deck? Trigger, you'd have to you'd have to really rely on, like, Daring Poro. Because that would be nice, because usually we have, like, we have so much need for mana, right? Like, you need, you need so much mana with all this stuff. Um, you just want as much mana as you can have. I wonder if we could get some Wolf Rider in there or something. I don't know, things to think about. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, maybe... Yeah, maybe the gain life... Burst speed... Catalyst of Aeons, maybe? Catalyst is pretty expensive, though, too. You don't really... You spend five mana, and presumably it's at least turn three. You're... You're not going to really gain 5 mana from Catalyst. 5 additional mana over... You know, you have to ha you have to survive another 5 turns just to get that mana back. I don't know. This card is real expensive. Um, cool. Yep. But those are some things to think about there. Alright, that's Counterfeit Poros. Those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there. And, of course, feel free to leave those comments. Let me know what you've been doing with Poros or whatever you want to see next week for Meme Tier Monday. I always like taking suggestions as well. Anyway, thank you so much for watching some Counterfeit Poros, and I'll see you for the next video.